explain Pat what up <laughs> so last night we just finished talking about uh, the MPF the maturation promoting factor and then we looked at another protein that we feel or that we think has something to do with the MPF activity called cyclin so just as a quick review we looked at this uh, image here of this graph so remember through the various experiments we were doing with the frog OO site we were seeing MPF activity and what we noticed was that MPF activity once you stimulate uh, fertilization we noticed that MPF activity rose and fell rose and fell throughout the cell cycle that was going on or through M phase in this case mitosis we also saw the protein cyclin B and we saw that cyclin B the concentration was also fluctuating and it too was rose with um, MPF activity and fell with MPF activity so the conclusion of last night's cell cycle part 2 video was saying is there some type of relationship between MPF activity and cyclin and it turns out that yes indeed there is a relationship a very strong relationship in fact with MPF activity and cyclin so now what we're going to look at are th about two or three more quick experiments that actually go ahead and demonstrate even further now the importance of cyclin B and its effect on MPF activity so let's go ahead and take a look so what we're going to look at here is again we have your egg extract here okay so again in this experimental setup we have our frog oocyte that we fertilized with sperm thus stimulating M phase or mitosis and in this case again if the egg is untreated we simply fertilize it we're going to see MPF and cyclin B rising during prophase metaphase and falling in the later stages of anaphase and telophase and then picking up again when we go through another round of mitosis and so on now what we're going to do is we're going to start affecting the cyclin B protein and see if that has any effect on the MPF activity so in this experiment here what we're going to do is we are going to knock out cyclin B protein the way to knock out a cyclin B protein and no other protein is to go ahead and introduce RNase to the cell so RNase is an enzyme that targets and destroys messenger RNA now remember from the last video series from the test prior that if you have no messenger RNA you cannot go through translation so no messenger RNA no translation no protein so that's exactly what happens here so if we introduce RNase it's going to the RNase is going to kill off the messenger RNA for cyclin B now when we go ahead and we try to fertilize this uh, egg cell that we have treated with RNase what we see is a flat line basically so we add the sperm to stimulate mitosis and what we see with the RNase treated egg is nothing there's no cyclin B and therefore there is no MPF activity so there's no M phase activity going on no mitosis whatsoever so if we kill off cyclin B we also kill off MPF activity so this first part of the experiment here by using RNase only demonstrates that cyclin B is necessary for both cyclin B concentration and MPF activity so again killing off the RNase killing off the messenger RNA of cyclin B shows that cyclin is necessary for MPF activity and therefore mitosis what we're going to do now is again we're going to take the RNase treated egg from just before so again if the egg is treated with RNase no cyclin B production therefore no MPF activity but now we're going to try to restore the cyclin B protein so now we introduce messenger RNA for cyclin B 
So by introducing messenger RNA for cyclin B back into the cell, what we end up seeing is that the cyclin B concentration is reactivated and also now the MPF activity is also reactivated. And again, we have our normal fluctuation. So again, prophase, metaphase, we have a rise in both cyclin B concentration and MPF activity. And then of course, again, in anaphase and telophase, we degrade both cyclin B and MPF activity. So by adding messenger RNA for cyclin B into an egg cell that has been treated with RNase and restoring the cyclin B activity, we now show that cyclin B is both necessary and sufficient for MPF activity and mitosis to occur. Right. Another thing that you can do also, again to serve as a control to both of these previous experiments now, is now what if you took cyclin B and you made a non-degradable form? So remember, when we look at our normal graph activity, we see that cyclin B rises during prophase metaphase, gets degraded in anaphase telophase. So when cyclin B goes down, MPF activity goes down. When cyclin B is up, MPF activity is up. So if we create a cyclin B mutant that has the ability to not degrade, what's the effect of MPF activity? So we do that experiment, and this is what we see. So a non-degradable form of cyclin B will maintain a high MPF activity. So here in this graph, we've created a non-degradable form of cyclin B. And again, we'll show you just in a minute how that's done. But as you can see, the both MPF and cyclin B concentration is high. And we are in this long blue bar. So we're locked up basically in this metaphase state. Because remember, in prophase, cyclin B and MPF activity are beginning to come together and be activated. But remember, it's at metaphase that we have both high MPF activity and a high cyclin B concentration. And that's what remains. That's why it's all light blue here. And the activity of both MPF and cyclin B are high. So a non-degradable form of cyclin B. Now, how does cyclin B normally get degraded? Because obviously, it's not always on. It does get degraded. And again, the degradation of cyclin B happens in anaphase. So let's take a look at that. So cyclin B is a protein, obviously. And these proteins, obviously, are always uh, consisting of a long chain of amino acids. So if we look at the primary sequence of all types of cyclins, because again, within the cell, there are a bunch of different cyclins that are responsible for various MPF activity. What is common to all types of cyclins is that they have a specific sequence of amino acid called the destruction box. And that's highlighted here in yellow. Now the destruction box obviously is a fairly conservative sequence of amino acids composed mainly of arginines, leucines, glycines, isoleucine. And it turns out that during anaphase, there is a protein that gets activated called the APC. The APC is the anaphase promoting complex. When the anaphase promoting complex is activated, it does something called ubiquitination. Now ubiquitination is simply a fancy word for tagging a protein. So the APC is going to ubiquitinate or tag the destruction box of cyclin and then this will signal proteases within the cell to attack and chew up and degrade or destroy the cyclin protein. And again, if the cyclin protein breaks down or gets degraded, then therefore the MPF activity also gets degraded and shuts down. So in the previous experiment that we had just looked at over here, 
where we made a non-degradable form of cyclin and therefore MPF activity also remained high. So the way to make a non-degradable form of cyclin B would be to mutate. So by mutating the destruction box then, that would, the APC, the amphase promoting complex, would fail to recognize the destruction box and not be able to ubiquitinate it. So therefore, the cyclin B or the cyclin protein would remain non-degraded. It would not be able to be destroyed. Right? So that's the, so this little set here then illustrates the importance of cyclin and its relationship with MPF activity. Cyclin is necessary and sufficient for MPF activity.